May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know what is the hope to which he has called us. Good morning, and welcome to our last service like this, I hope. I'm not trying to jinx it, I'm going to knock on the podium here. Uh, not that we have been discouraged by doing it this way. Myself and Reverend Owen here have enjoyed uh, bringing you worship this way. And just to reassure you, we still will. It's just that when we gather once again now, uh, we are going to be putting the camera here to record a service week to week to share. But it's going to be warts and all, just what the service is that week. Just what you see is what you get, <laughs> and that'll be perfect. It'll be back to a semblance of what we used to be used to. So we hope that you will enjoy this service with us today, and we hope that you are encouraged to join us when we open up again. One thing I'm going to remind everyone is that on our Facebook page, and you can share this around through email and anything else, I'm going to be putting out a little uh, Q&A sort of a video to help everybody understand what is expected in the week to come as we get ready, and so when you come through the door, and that sort of a thing. So uh, when we re-establish church on September the 6th in the building, uh, we hope to invite you all as part of it, and uh, we hope that you will be uh, feel comfortable to come, but at the same time know that there'll be worship as well shared online, if you are comfortable there too. Everything you need today is found on our Facebook page, and we'll begin on page 45. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. And we'll say to the Nike responsibly on uh, page 49. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. You may be seated now for the proclamation of the word. Our first reading is from Exodus chapter 3. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. And he looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight, and see why this bush is not burning up. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. And then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmakers. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Persazites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And he said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you, that it is I who sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is your name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am as sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title 
for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we will do responsibly Psalm 105, uh, verse 1 to 6, and 23 to 26, and the prayer at the end. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvelous the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O Je children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies. Whose heart he turned, so that they hated his people, and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. And the prayer together on page 848. God of our salvation, through, through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have fulfilled your promise to our ancestors in the faith to redeem the world from slavery and to lead us into the promised land. Grant us living water from the rock and bread from heaven, that we may survive our desert pilgrimage and praise you forever through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Our second reading is Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be arrogant. Ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with, lo with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will eat burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now please stand for the gospel. Our Gospel, uh, the Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he might go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, that must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. 
For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of the Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I have been doing a lot of reading lately. Uh, I've shared online now, by this time, all the rules and regulations we need to follow as we reopen the church. And lately, I'm sure you've taken the time to do the same. And it's, it's a list, it's quite a list of things that we have to do, things that we have to remember, new things that we have to encounter. Something we will all have to walk through together, of course, and we will help each other with. After all, that's what families do, isn't it? We help each other through difficult times, and sometimes, in some families, it's with new rules and lists to stay safe. And with us, it's no different. Our church family is no different. Oh, okay, there's one difference. We don't just have to love and support each other because we might be related or because we live in the same house. We also do so because we are called to do so. Our Old Testament reading, our New Testament reading, our Gospel, all three of them this, this week deal with a list of things that we are called to do or to follow in order to be faithful people to God, to Christ, and to support each other, too. Requirements we are not just compelled to do or recommended to follow. No. These are things that are necessary to truly show our respect and commitment to God, to Christ, and to show to the world. Let's start simple. Let's start with Moses in Exodus, one of my favorite chapters, encountering God in the burning bush. Starts out pretty simple enough. He hears the voice, he goes to visit, and right away, hey, 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 stop right there, verse 5. No sandals. This is holy ground. Oh, okay, well that seems fair. So he slips off his shoes, and a bit hard on the feet, I'm sure, out in the middle of the wilderness. I mean, hot sand, hot rocks, rough terrain. It's inconvenient, for sure, for Moses, especially in the midst of working with the sheep. But hardly undoable. It's very much like some of the inconvenience we will struggle with when we return to this holy space, all of our holy spaces. The questions at the door when you come in, the masks you're going to have to wear coming in and going out, the no touching thing, which some people might appreciate and others are going to miss. I got some huggers. We have some huggers in church and they're going to struggle with that. It's all inconvenient, but not undoable. But then, God lays on Moses a bigger request, a big one. Go save my people, your people, from bondage and slavery and harm. And you know what? Moses' response reflects many of our own when, he asks, when we're asked to do something profound or different. What? Me? What, <laughs> what could I? Possibly do. How can I possibly help? I have actually seen people pretty much act that way. <laughs> I have, even in my past. And similar voices called out similar questions when we were discussing people returning to our worship spaces. It sounded a little more like this, though. Well, how are we going to get people back now, as, uh, after all this time away? What can we possibly say or do to encourage them and to help them get back here. Honestly, it starts by simply calling to them and remembering our own call. Look to the passage from Paul's letter to the Romans today, which in many translations has a subtitle, Marks of the True Christian. And this is towards the end of Paul's life in evangelism, 
This is his last letter that we know about that is authentically his before he was imprisoned, ironically, in Rome, and then put to death. But in the midst of all that, Paul lists in this part of his letter, for all Christians then and today, the fundamentals of what we can do, especially when we reflect on what we must do to reopen these spaces for worship. I'm going to walk you through them one at a time. So, starting at verse 9, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. That, that seems pretty obvious. Don't do bad things, hate them in fact, and instead do what is good. Love those things. And let your love be genuine, so don't fake it. Okay, that, that can be done. Love one another with mutual affection, so it's not just about, I'm going to love you more. As a matter of fact, what it says is, outdo one another in showing honor. That means respect. So it's not just about lovey, lovey, lovey. It's also about, and I respect that you love me back, and I respect that you can do things that I can't, and so on. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. So that means skip on the jealousy. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. Okay. Be excited about our faith. Be excited about why we do the things we do. Be excited about reaching out to those in need and in other ways through Christ, by Christ, and with Christ, by the gifts that you have been given by God. Okay, I'm very excited about the things we can do, whether it's the smallest thing, whether you're here, one of the people greeting at the door and helping people get to their seats, or whether you just wear your mask. You are showing respect honor, and excitedly you are showing not to lack in zeal to encourage people to come here. Okay. Rejoice in hope. Hope. That's something important too. To hold on to the fact that things, even though they are this way, might not be this way for very long. Or if they are, that it won't stay this way. To hope for change, for improvement, for healing. Okay. So rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. You hear that? We've got to be patient in suffering, if you want to call this suffering. But in all of the things that are a nuisance and an inconvenience, we have to be patient. Okay. And persevere in prayer. I hope during all this time apart, you haven't ceased to pray. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. You can't get much more hospitable than the things that we are called to do to reopen this space and to be careful to saints, not just those who have gone ahead of us, but even those you see around you. And last but not least, number verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. No matter how contrary we may get, Remember that we are all struggling and striving together. Okay. Now, even though this list of fundamentals seems obvious, some of them should, especially for those of us who have been around the block of the church a few times. And at times, these are still sometimes tricky to do, especially when you take into consideration your own ego or your own need to be right sometimes, or even our own need and desire for things not to change. <laughs> God bless the church, but sometimes we struggle with different things, don't we? Sometimes. Sometimes. And these things might interfere with this little list of fundamentals. And it's when I call your attention to Matthew's Gospel today, the passage from Matthew, that I remind you that nobody said trying to keep up these fundamentals. Nobody said upholding the life of a Christian to follow Christ would be easy. Least of all, Christ himself, when he said it wouldn't just not be easy, but not without sacrifice. Matthew's Gospel today, which has two subtitles, it has Jesus foretells his death and resurrection, that's the first part, and the second later part is the cross and self-denial. So that's verses 21 to 28 in chapter 16. Verses 24 and 25 I want to draw your attention to because it spells out something. In verses 24 and 25, Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Very familiar verse. 
For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for that life? That's verse 26 as well. This all spells out plainly Christ's own call to what we must do to be his followers. And that cross that he's talking about can be in the form of many things to encumber and inconvenience us in our life, regardless of what we think about it. We may say to ourselves, hey, I know this Bible inside and out. That verse I knew before you even said it. I got that. We may even say, I pray daily. I pray better than most people I know. I pray more often than most people I know. Okay? I am a super Christian. I'm crazy great. Okay? Some don't say any of those things. You might think it, but my point is still the same. Your cross doesn't change. Even though you may be a welcome person in this household of God by doing all that you can to reach out to do your best to follow these little fundamentals that Paul listed that doesn't make your cross much lighter it's not supposed to we all have issues and struggles we must face even when we are doing everything right look at Simon Peter last week in our gospel reading the one that came right before this one he was the rock upon which the church was going to be built. He was the one that God said, I'm giving you the keys. You're it. You are the best, Peter. You're awesome. And then what happened this week? A big old fall. Lord, forbid this to happen. God forbid anything should ever happen to you, Lord. Get behind me, Satan, he calls him. From you're the bedrock of the church to... Satan. <laughs> That's a huge drop in less than a few verses in the same chapter of Matthew. Simon Peter struggled all of his life seeing the bigger picture and the plan Christ laid out. And Peter often forced him, found himself struggling to see beyond gaining this whole world with Christ. And I don't mean that in a greedy way. I don't mean that he expected, like the brother Zebedee, that they would just have power in this space. Not really. He struggled with the idea of what Christ's end game was, that Christ had to die. He struggled that in order for everyone else to gain true freedom, Christ had to die. In order for everyone, as an exodus, to be made free, a great sacrifice had to be made. In Moses' time, it was the loss of firstborn children during Passover. In Christ's time, it was just one child, one son, one firstborn, himself. As I said, verse 26 says, For what will it profit anyone for to gain the whole world but forfeit their life? What good is it to feel correct or right, or superior to another person when it comes to arguing over the COVID stuff, or restrictions, or masks, or politics, or whatever, if we aren't focused on why we're doing any of these things. It's not simply about being forced to do something inconvenient. It's about saving each other. It's about loving each other. It's about protecting each other. It's about being welcomed back here safely with joy, not contrariness and confrontation. Even in offering our worship to continue online, we're showing love even beyond and outside this space. As we try to return to this holy space together, all of our church is reopening. I invite you to keep in mind as we do so with this litany of rules and requirements that we have been given that these were given out of love and honor to each other, to contribute to the needs of the faithful and extending hospitality to everyone. That's on his list. Paul didn't write that for no reason. 
These are a few small crosses, little burdens that we have to carry. And they are not a real burden if we do so with the same light, the same love that our own Savior did with his enormous burden from start to finish in his blessed life. Taking off your sandals is not a big deal when coming to share in the presence of God. Wearing and taking off a mask, not a big deal. When sharing in the presence and company of the saints in light, of the faithful gathered, and the worship we share. Please keep all of this in mind just as Christ has always kept you in his. These little things show that you are caring for others, showing that love, and in all things, doing what is blessed. Let's come back to this holy place ready. Let's come back to this holy place comforted. And let's come back to this holy place rejoicing joy. Let's pray. In our lives, Lord, you set before us things we must do. You call us to things that we can do. You know what it is that we can accomplish. But in all of this, we ask your strength, your courage, your comfort, and your walking alongside of us. As so many of us have recognized, you have done so all of our lives. In the midst of these inconveniences, in the midst of these little things, these little burdens we must take off, help us still to carry them with joy and with confidence, knowing that we do so in love, in charity, and in hospitality, and in honor to all of those who come to share in this worship. In all these things we give you thanks. Walk with us as we pray. We continue with the affirmation of our faith found in the Apostles' Creed on page 52, and we say that together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to have our offertory hymn now. and. Uh, you're going to be getting used to this now because for a little while now we're going to be doing soloists. So a lot of our music will be done for us as we gather. But even so, it's still important to praise and to give thanks in music as well as prayer. I walked one day along a country road And there a stranger journeyed to Bent low beneath the burden of his load It was a cross, a cross I knew Take up thy cross and follow me I hear the blessed Savior call how can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? I cried, Lord Jesus, and he spoke my name. I saw his hands all bruised and torn. I stooped to kiss away the marks of shame The shame for me that he had borne 
Take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Savior call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? Oh, let me bear thy cross, dear Lord, I cried. And lo, a cross for me appeared. The one forgotten I had cast aside. The one so long that I had feared. Take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Savior call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? The cross I'll carry till the crown appears. The way my journey soon will end. When God himself will wipe away all tears. And friend hold fellowship with friend. Take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Savior call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? Take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Savior call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? The prayer over our gifts today is found on your little insert that you have on faith on, that you could have found on Facebook. And we're going to say it together. Merciful God, receive all we offer you this day. Give us grace to love one another, that your love may be made perfect in us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In our Anglican cycle of prayer this morning, we pray for the United Church of South India. We pray for the, uh, the moderator and the bishop there. And in our provincial prayer care, uh, we pray for the Diocese of Montreal, uh, Bishop Mary Irwin Gibson. And uh, we continue to pray now, uh, continuing prayer for our tri-diocesan cycle of prayer for the parish of Selvage, the, the rector of the river at Juanita Freeman. And uh, we pray for the parish of Sioko, the priest in charge of the Reverend George Critchwell. And of course, we ask prayers for our companion diocese of Rokan, South Sudan, Bishop Francis. In today's Gospel, Jesus invites us to follow him. As he laid down his life in intercession for the world, let us pray on behalf of people everywhere, saying, Lord, strengthen us. For all people of faith who struggle to believe in the promise of life amid the clamor of death, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, strengthen us. For the churches who must bear witness to the possibility of taking up the cross and following Jesus, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, strengthen us. For those who are losing their souls in pursuit of worldly gain, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, strengthen us. For those laying down their lives in faithful dedication to God's call, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, strengthen us. And for those struggling with their health, 
the sick, those in treatment, those in hospital, and those who have asked for our prayers, especially now the ones we will name. And if you have any at home, uh, you may say aloud or in the silence of your heart with us. And we pray for, continue to pray for little Leah. We pray for Elizabeth, for Judy, for Clara, for Cyril, for Roy C, for Gord, for Roy G, for Wayne, for Robin, for Roy L, for Lynn, for Justin, for Cynthia, for Roy W, for Renetta, for Dorothy, for Harry, and for Reverend Canon Rodney Francis. And he is in Ontario. That they may find comfort and hope in those who hold fast to what is good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord strengthen, strengthen us. And for all gathering in worship who will one day be judged by God's standards and meet Christ coming in glory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us. And together, most high God, your ways are not our ways, yet your ways bear life. Hear the petitions of your assembled people. Pour out on your world the faith to hear your call and the courage to answer it. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who is one with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And we say the call it together. Author and giver of all good things, grant back in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us in all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as we gather all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Well, God bless you, everyone. And we once again hope and pray that you have a safe and comfortable week as we prepare for a lot of things. A lot of our groups are meeting. As you can see as well, there have been some photographs already shared of people preparing their churches. The cathedral was prepared recently. And so we are going to take... Uh, we're going to copy them. I'm not going to say we're going to take anything from them. We're just going to outright copy them. We're going to do pretty much the same thing here. We're going to have, just to walk you through it briefly, there's going to be a table in the porch when you come in, and you must wear your mask to your seat. And once you're sat in your pew and socially distanced there, you can take it off. But in and out of your car, you've got to leave your mask on. And at the door, they're going to ask you a couple of questions when you come in, and that's part and parcel of it. So it's an idea, a good idea might be to consider taking a little bit of extra time to come here before you get here for church on September the 6th. Everything else besides that is pretty much the same. The service will be here in St. Paul's up on the wall and out in Glenwood or in uh, North Arm North we'll be using uh, books. But what we're going to recommend is that if you are using books, bring your own. So when I say BYOB, I mean book. <laughs> I want you to bring your own prayer books if you have them at home, whether it be BCP or BAS. But uh, if you don't have one at home and would prefer to use one with your hands instead of following along in any other way because you haven't memorized or it's up on the wall, uh, you can borrow one from our churches. We only ask that you tell us so that we can tick your name off on a list to know that you have one and that we'll want it back when things go back to a place where we don't have to be loaning out books anymore. 
but we are happy to loan them to you if it's part of worship. That's okay. As well, then when we leave this space as well, we're going to be doing it in a way that's called staggering, very similar to how you'd be going up for communion. You can't all rush the rail at the same time. We're going to be letting you go pew by pew so that we don't all rush the back porch here at St. Paul's. And at Glenwood, uh, there's a secondary door. So we're just going to go out through that secondary door right into the parking lot. And we got to remind everybody, don't be hugging, don't kissing, don't, don't lick anything. For heaven's sake, don't, you know, don't be sneezing into each other's faces or anything like that. We got to still try and maintain some bit of sensibility. They put their mask back on. They yes, and when you're, when you're leaving or coming, you must have your mask on. Thank you. Uh, even if you got to go to the washroom. Like I said, if you got to get up for whatever reason, uh, just put on a mask to do it. But when you're sat down experiencing worship, being a part of worship, you can have it. You can take it off because we can guarantee we're all social distanced. Then you see, it's like when you're at a restaurant. Aside from that, I, like I said, even though I'm sharing this right now, I'm also going to be sharing another little uh, video later about it as well. No singing. Oh yes, and uh, our music, as I said, halfway through our service. We're going to be having soloists do music for us right now, whether it be a member of the choir, whether it be somebody from our BAC boys one at a time, whether it be the organist themselves, if Eunice or if Lynette or if any other of our musicians wish to play and sing, that's perfectly fine. But as a group, we can't yet, nor can we have the choir yet. Right now, we're still working out the ins and outs of group singing, so please be patient. But we must follow regulations about that, so for now, no choir and no group singing. And I'm not going to come down and smack you on the wrist with a meter stick if you are humming along, okay? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm too busy up here. But please, help us out with that. I know it seems like a lot to remember, which is why I'm going to be doing a little reminder video later on this week, as a matter of fact, for this week coming. But I just ask your patience, because we're all trying to get adjusted to this, and this is all new for all of us. But at the same time, I'm confident we can do this so that we can be comfortable here. As well, just another reminder, if for whatever reason you feel under the weather, uh, sick, or perhaps even are unsure of whether or not you have or will uh, feel comfortable here about COVID or anything else, it's okay to stay at home if you wish. Don't feel you must, you're still welcome. But at the same time, if you want to stay home, we will still be doing an online worship. We'll just be recording worship as it is and then put it online for the afternoon of that Sunday. So with that in mind, uh, that's no excuse. <laughs> Don't be saying, well, I prefer my pajamas, I might as well stay home. Because we still need your support is the other side of it too. The offering we have received and everything else that we've been doing to support the church has been going all right online and otherwise. But just a reminder, please continue to support so that we can continue to bring this worship to you. Now with all that said, I want to still say that there were birthdays and anniversaries. If you had one, we've been covering a lot of them. As far as I know, everybody we had to have is done. The only one I'll mention this week is a special uh, shout out to uh, my wife's godson, uh, Jacob Thomas. He's over in Grand Falls. He turned the big 10 this week. He turned Thursday. He turned 10 years old. 10! He's double digits on. <laughs> so that's a big deal. So we're very proud of him and happy birthday to him. Uh, and any other birthdays or anniversaries or anything of the like, uh, please let us know because we're happy to share them and we would be happy to do so on Facebook page as well. Aside from that, uh, like I said, keep your ear to the ground about any information that we'll be sharing over Facebook. And if you know somebody who's not on our Facebook play page, please share that information. I'll do my best to get the information out. We're also gonna be doing a couple of phone calls to some folks just to remind you what's going on. But we are confident in how things are going to come about. We are confident in returning to worship, and we hope that you will feel confidence as well. But we will encourage you as best we can. So God bless you, and now Reverend Owen is going to bless you too. <laughs>
Go in peace, my brothers and sisters, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.